Okay, in this video, I want to show you how to calculate the log base 10 of x. And we're going to do that using integration by parts. But before I do that, I'm going to have to change this log into a base which I'm more familiar with. For instance, the natural log of x, where the base is e rather than 10. And I'm just going to show you how to derive that. Because if you're like me, I don't really like memorizing lots of formulae. It's far easier if you can write out a quick 30 or 60 second derivation just to remind yourself of what it is. Okay, so first I'm going to let x equals log base b of a, then I'm going to let y equals log base c of a, and z equals log base c of b. And my goal here is to find some sort of relationship between x, y, and z, and that will allow me in turn to express the log base 10 of x in terms of any base I want. Now, the first thing I, I should mention also is that this b, I want this b such that b is not equal to 1. Now, that should be quite clear that you can't really have a log base um, of 1 because this equation basically says b to the power of what gives me a. This says b to the power of x gives me a. But obviously 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So that doesn't really help me. So what can I do here instead? Well I'm going to raise both sides to some power. So I'm going to exponentiate both sides with base b. So if x equals log base b of a then I'm going to say that that tells me that b to the power x, remember I'm just making b the base, is equal to b to the power of log base b of a. But b to the power of log base b of a is the same as a to the power 1. In this case, the coefficient of the log in the power of b is 1. So that's just the same as a. I'll do exactly the same for this equation, except I will exponentiate both sides with c as the base. And that gives me, well, if I exponentiate with c as the base here, on the left hand side I'll get c to the y, and that's going to give me c to the power of log base c of a, and likewise, just as the top equation, that's just equal to a. So these two things immediately we can see are the same. What about the last equation? We'll do exactly the same with c as the base. That gives me c to the power z is equal to the c to the power of log base c of b, and c to the power of log base c of b, as always, is b. So how does that help us? Well, it helps us in the following way. Well, notice that c to the z is equal to b, and I know that b to the power x is equal to a. So if I take c to the z and raise that to the power of x, I'm going to get b to the x here, and that's going to be equal to a. So let's just do that. So if I scroll down a little bit to give me some space, then this tells me that c to the power z, all to the power x, that's equal to b to the power x, but I know from my first equation here that b to the x is just equal to a. Okay, well that tells me that c to the power of z times x, c to the power of z times x is just equal to a, right? And that's just using the power rule for parentheses. c to the power of z, x, c to the power of z to the power of x is just c to the power of z times x. And this gives me this right here. But wait a second, I know that a from my second equation is just equal to c to the power y. So this is also equal to c to the power y, and therefore I get c to the zx is equal to c to the y. So therefore c to the zx is equal to c to the y. And since the exponential functions are injective over the real line, then that tells me that zx equals y. Okay, and what does that tell me? Well, I know that z, x, and y were given by these logarithms at the start. So I know that z is log base c of b. So that tells me that z, or log base c of b, times x, which in this case was log base b of a, log base b of a, that's equal to y. And y in this case is log base c of a log base c of a. Now if I divide both sides of the equation by log base c of b, and I can do that because b is not equal to 1, right? If I had log base c of 1, that would be equal to 0. But since b is not equal to 1, I can do that. So therefore, log base b of a is equal to log base c of a, base c of a divided by log base c of b. And this right here is the change of base formula. And this is the formula that we're going to use and apply to log base 10 of x. Right, so let's just think about what we're trying to do here. So I've got this log base 10 of x. So I've got log base 10 
of x. And I want that I want to write that as log base e of something. So how can I do that? Well, in this case, I've got b equal to 10. So in this case, I just have b equals 10. That's the base I am starting with. b is my starting base. a in this case is x. So a in this case is just x. And c is the base that I want to try and jump to. And in this, this case, c is just equal to e, the base of the natural logarithm, which I want. OK, so that tells me that log base 10 of x is equal to log base c of a. Well, that's log base c, which is e, natural log of a, which is x, all divided by log base e, because c is equal to e, of b, which in this case is 10. But, nat but log base e of x is just equal to the natural log, so that's just ln of x, all divided by the natural log of 10. So that tells me that log base 10 of x is just equal to natural log of x divided by the natural log of 10. By the way, if you're given another base, so for instance, the title of this video is for log base 10 of x, but if you had, let's say, log base um, a of x, then all you basically need to do is write that as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. So in other words, you just write log, natural log of x and divide by the natural log of whatever the base is. So if, if a was equal to 7 and you wanted to write log base 7 of x in terms of natural logs, you'd have natural log of x divided by natural log of 7. OK, so how does this help me with my integral? Well, the title of this video is how to integrate log base 10 of x. So let's do that. So how do I integrate log base 10 of x with respect to x? So from my change of base formula, I can express log base 10 of x in this form. So it's natural log of x divided by natural log of 10. 10 is the base here. So this is just the integral of natural log of x divided by the natural log of 10. That's my base. Now, natural log of 10 does not depend on x, so that's just a constant. So I can take that out of the integral. So I've got a factor of 1 over natural log of 10 outside the integral times the integral of natural log of x dx. OK, well, I'm going to use integration by parts. Now, I'm going to use integration by parts because there's two things I notice. I can visualize this integral as not just the integral of natural log of x, but the integral of 1 times the natural log of x. So if I put a 1 times here, I don't change the value of the integrand or the integral for that matter. Now, what can I differentiate and what can I integrate? I am trying to find the integral of natural log of x, so I don't know how to integrate natural log, but I do know how to differentiate it. So I'm going to integrate by parts. I'm going to let um, u be equal to the natural log of x, because that's the thing I want to differentiate. And I want to let dv be equal to 1 dx. And I'm letting dv be equal to 1 dx, because 1's the thing I know how to integrate. OK. and if u is equal to natural log of x, then the derivative of u with respect to x is just 1 over x. Right, the derivative of natural log is just 1 over x. And likewise, if dv equals 1 dx, then integrating both sides with respect to x gives me v is equal to x. OK, now using my integration by parts formula, that gives me 1 over the natural log of 10 times the integral of the natural log of x dx. That's equal to, I'm going to have this constant outside, so I better write that out first, natural log of 10 times some stuff. And that stuff is going to be what my integration by parts formula gives me. Well, I'm going to have u times v, which is x times natural log of x. So uv minus the integral of v du. And v is x, and du is 1 over x dx, so times 1 over x dx. And that's all in parentheses being multiplied by this constant out in front. And that gives me 1 over natural log of 10 times x natural log of x minus what? Well, I've got x times 1 over x. x times its own inverse is just 1. I can take if x is numerator and x is denominator, x over x cancel each other out to give me 1 dx. And I know that the integral of 1 is x. I've just done it. And that's equal to 1 over the natural log of 10 times x times the natural log of x minus x. OK, now if I just multiply this out, I'm going to get 1 over natural log, or rather if I write it like this, x times the natural log of x divided by the natural log of 10 minus x divided by the natural log of 10. 
And by the way, you can generalize this in the following way. You can say that therefore, if I just replace 10 with an arbitrary base, that the log base a of x dx, that is just equal to x times the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a, a is my base, minus x over the natural log of a. And by the way, since this is an indefinite integral, you might want to tackle on a plus c at the end, just like that. Okay, so that's how you integrate um, the logarithm base a of x with respect to x. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks.